Hello everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this McGuire Tech video training session. Today we're going to cover the McGuire mechanical pit style leveler as well as a mechanical EOD leveler. We're going to be going through the installation process, some installation do's and don'ts, as well as some adjustments and some maintenance type issues. As I mentioned before, we're going to be going through the installation process and the shimming process of a mechanical level. The first thing I would do anytime that I start an installation project, I always verify my pit dimensions. Not only the front, make sure it's the correct depth, but the rear correct depth as well. And then always take a diagonal dimension of your pit. Make sure that you have a square pit to begin with. Once you have the leveler set in place, there are very specific points that need to be shimmed on a mechanical level. In the rear of the pit, you've got the four channel uprights on a McGuire mechanical leveler. Underneath each one of those channels, you need to supply shims. If you refer to your owner's manual, we have specific sizes of shims that should be used. Typically, a 4x4 four four shim is acceptable. Nothing smaller than that is recommended. If you have to do a, a stack shim, we recommend a pyramid method. Again, if you refer to the manual, we have that pointed out there in various locations throughout the manual. But every upright needs to have a shim. When you put your shims in place, make sure the shim goes beyond the bar that's attached to the back of the, to the back frame. When you do your welding on a shim, don't just rely on a tack for a shim. You want that shim in place and welded fully. If you're using a four inch shim, at least a three and a half inch weld should be supplied. Not only do you have the four spots in the back on a McGuire level of the shim, a very, very important part is underneath your lifting arm. That lifting arm needs to be supported and shimmed properly. Don't try and cheat and leave a, a small gap that you think you can fill with a weld. Try and get the shim stack very tight underneath that lifting arm. If you don't put any shims underneath your lifting arm, the uh, mechanical properties of the way this leveler works is going to be very spongy. So you always want to put shims underneath your lifting arm. Underneath the hold down, it's not necessary to shim. If you really want to put a shim, you may. Another very, very important spot to shim is underneath the lip keepers in the front of the level. You don't want to be off to the side. You don't want to be in the middle. You want to have a shim area that covers not only the lip keeper area, but the snubber chain as well. And on the opposite side, you want to get underneath the lip keeper. And it's very important to shim underneath the, the maintenance prop area too. Another thing that I'm going to stress that I didn't point out earlier is lockout tagging. Whenever you're working underneath the leveler, always make sure that you've got the prop in place with the pin. And with the McGuire leveler, we actually have the lip prop as well. Make sure you've got your lip prop engaged. It'll not allow the lip to come down on top of your head. Once you've got your front shims in place, don't finish weld them until you check to make sure that the leveler is going to sit down in the keepers and the overhead door will close. The only reason I mention that, it's a mechanical leveler being spring activated, so you're always going to have pressure up on your level. With that being said, you may have to adjust your shimming in the front. It may be too high or too low just because of the float aspect that you get from a mechanical leveler. When your mechanical leveler stores in its keepers, being spring actuated, it's always going to want to lift up a little bit. So you always want to check to make sure that the overhead door closes before you finish weld anything in the front. One other thing to mention, uh, when you, you've got your leveler set in place and you've tacked it in the back, meaning the rear curb angle to the frame of the leveler, you want to make sure that depending on the width of your leveler, you follow the manufacturer's recommended spec on our welding. Typically it's a six inch weld, six inch on centers. Uh, six foot wide is different than seven foot wide and six and a half foot wide. So be sure that you lay it out. 
and do it according to the manual. Again, you can always reference everything I'm talking about in our owner's manuals, which are available online. If you have any questions, it's a really good resource material for you. Go online, look up everything I've just talked about in the manual. Now I'd like to go through some of the major components that are found on a McGuire mechanical leveler. You have a hold down assembly. If you're familiar with a mechanical leveler, it's pretty much the same on any mechanical leveler. A hold down is a hold down. You have a lifting arm assembly and you have your spring assembly. You also have what's referred to as a lip banger. This is the mechanism that actuates the lip as the mechanical leveler is being raised. You have a hold down, or a, a, a maintenance prop, I'm sorry. And then you have your safety leg mechanism. This safety leg mechanism, as you can see, there's a rod attached to it. This is actually, as you can do, a below dock end load, for a below dock end load situation. There's also a gas charge shock. This shock, along with the lip assist rod, actually help maintains how fast the lip closes once the leveler is being locked down. As far as maintenance is concerned on your McGuire mechanical leveler, the threaded rod portion of the lifting arm, you should put some penetrating oil, some grease, something just to prevent it from rusting. We do this in the event that you ever have to adjust the mainsprings. The mainsprings are adjusted to get your walk down correct and also to get the lift to actuate correctly. The hold down, anywhere that you have a pivoting area, some spray lubricant of some sort is recommended. The one thing that you never do on a mechanical leveler is apply any type of grease or lubricant on the cam or the wheel that rides on the cam, the caster. It's just a simple caster wheel but you never want to apply grease to this area or lubricant to this area. Another one, the bottom side of your hold down, you could apply some light penetrating oils to that, but never anything on the toothed area of the hold down. On the side of the caster wheel, there is a grease fitting. That can be greased. A few other areas to apply some penetrating oil or spray lube is through the pin of the lifting arm. When it is assembled and shipped out, it is greased, but over time that grease may wash away, so some penetrating oil, some lubricant. There's one other point in the back where the chain goes through the guide. That shoulder bolt, you should lubricate that as well. The area here that the threaded rods are fixed to the lifting arm, some light penetrating oil there is recommended. Uh, you guys can pretty much use whatever you want. I don't recommend using white lithium grease though. To me it's a waste of time. WD-40, I don't recommend that as well. It just washes away. In the front area, as you can see, every tube has a grease fitting. The unfortunate part about these grease fittings, they don't have a ball check in them. So don't overload them with grease. It's going to be a waste of time. A couple of pumps in each tube is plenty. Not only do we have grease fittings on the tubes, the attachment that's on the lip, there's also a grease fitting underneath this. Along with some lubricating points, you can see the safety legs rock back and forth. Through the hinge area of the safety legs, some spray lubricant. There's also a shoulder bolt here where the lip actuator is, some lubricating oil there. The mechanism here that actuates the lip, all of these points should have some lubrication on them. And one final one is your maintenance prop area. Depending on usage of your McGuire mechanical leveler, there are certain parts over time that may have to be replaced. Probably one of the biggest ones is the McGuire hold down. The McGuire hold down, along with this gas charge shock, which over time may be replaced as well are readily available from any of your local dealers or directly from McGuire. Now I'd like to talk about the installation of a McGuire mechanical edge of dock, more commonly referred to as a EOD. The installation of an edge of dock, we have your finished floor of your building, 
you have the face of the building and you have the EOD. We like to position the back plate of the EOD a quarter of an inch lower than what your finished floor is. By doing that, you accomplish a flat surface between your finished floor and the tubes of the EOD. If you take the back plate of the EOD and have that tight with the finished floor, you have a potential of forking the tubes anytime you roll over it. So when the installation is done correctly, you should have an even transition from your finished floor over the tubes of the edge of dock. The welding on the edge of dock is done in a continuous weld from one end to the other. I like to start and have my tacks in certain areas and then someone I'll do a, a weld on one side, a weld in the middle, a weld on the other side. That way it minimizes warpage of the back plate. Once you've got three or four welds in there, you can complete the welding process fully across the entire edge of dock. Some other points of, of installation. The area on the side of EOD that needs to be welded fully as well. All the way down, vertical up is recommended. Both sides. And as you can see in this one, there are several holes in the base plate that are either plug welded to wherever you have on the base you're building and or uh, we're all anchored into the building. Uh, I use a DeWalt power bolt. They do not come with the EOD or the edge of dock, so that's a 5 8 by 4, 5 8 by 5 is recommended, depending on what you have for concrete. The bumpers are located on either side of your edge of dock. Keep a minimal of space as possible. This side it's more critical because of the actuating arm that you use to run your EOD. This side you can keep a little tighter gap. The bumpers are affixed to whatever you have for a wall, either by the bolt holes or continuous welds. On top the bumper as well, that's a full weld across the bumper. Both sides. They're identical. So you either bolt on your edge of dock bumper or it's welded fully. The welds on the, on the bumper, you could probably get away with a vertical down. Vertical ups are always recommended. And the full weld across the top. Maintenance required on a mechanical edge of dock is, is pretty close to the same as a mechanical edge of dock. We have the grease fittings on all the tubes. Again, don't go overboard with the grease. It's just going to leach out. You've got grease fittings on the lip plate, grease fittings on the base plate. We have a bearing here that can be lubricated. We have the rollers that can be lubricated. We have a spot down here that can be lubricated. As you can see, I do have the actuating rod in the maintenance position. This is our torsion spring. If you wish, you can use a garage door spring oil on that to keep it from rusting. The adjustment on this would be done right here. And this, I would refer you to the owner's manual again, like I did with the mechanical leveler, the pit style leveler. To do your adjustment on this, refer to your owner's manual, readily available online. There's really not a whole lot of EOD maintenance that's required, other than the few points I just went through. I'd like to thank you for watching or participating in this McGuire Tech Service video. If you have any further questions or requirements, please contact your regional McGuire dealer or McGuire itself. Thank you.